Hi everybody. I am Jenna and this is Aqua Dolly. And I want to thank you for hopping on and joining my live. Turn that down because there's like a delay. What we're making today is snowflakes. And we're using clothespins to bring it back another old craft. How many years ago did they do these? Well, we're going to do them today too. So what you need is 16 of these clip uh, uh, spring-loaded clothespins. They are very easy to take apart. You just twist them. They come right apart. And you just pull the, the spring off. And there you go. So you need to do that with 16 of them. You just twist them. You can get these at Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart. Um, hardware stores have them. So just twist them apart. They come right apart. Now, the hardest thing about this is deciding how you're going to finish these. You're going to paint them, you're going to stain them, um, you can grunge them. So, um, we're going to do one two different ways. So, you can paint these exactly the way we did the beads the other day by putting a little bit of paint in a baggie, throwing them in. it and just mush it around just like this now you can do this um, I have grunge with Mod Podge mixed together with just a tiny bit of water in there and it, it has cinnamon and the instant coffee in it you can do use this same way um, so you just mush them around Now this doesn't give a complete coat of paint on it. It gives a little bit of paint on it. Some of these I didn't move around enough. But that's okay because we're doing primitive. So see, you just throw them out on the paper towel, blot with paper towel, and they dry really, really quick. So there you go. So what we're doing is we're using the flat side of the clothespin, which is the outside. And we're just going to take a little bit of glue. You don't need much hot glue. Putting it on and we're putting two flat sides together. And that's what you've got. I, I'm, I apologize for this glare on my glasses. I don't know how to get rid of it. So, and you're going to do that with all your clothespins. So, just match up your edges and your sides just so they're flush. I'm using the tip of the glue gun to um, spread the glue out. If you get a little bit that comes out of the side or the top or bottom, just wipe it off. This is a really good thing um, if you're doing, looking for a kid's craft. Um, instead of using the hot glue, you can use the Eileen's Tacky Glue. And instead of paint, you can use markers. Just squeeze them together. Putting them in the baggie, just the same way with the beads, it stops you from getting paint all over your hands. I had to move the, hi mom, the uh, session from three to one because our grandson is having an orchestra concert tonight and want to go to it. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I need one more. So I'm going to mush this one around. So you see, you can instantly, if you're using, I, I'm doing these with um, Waverly Ivory Chalk Paint. Um, you can use them instantly. And mine does not have total coverage. I don't want total coverage of paint. So there's eight of those. So we need to do eight more. So I've already had eight glued together, so I'm just going to throw those in here. And I'm going to add a little bit of paint. Now when you do it this way, you do not need very much paint at all. And I'm adding grunge to this one. Now even the grunge, um, when you mix it with Mod Podge and it sits, you have to shake it. But make sure you seal your bag because otherwise when you're squishing this around, you're going to end up with whatever's in your bag all over your face. It's going to squirt out. So I'm just going to do this. And dump them out. Piece of paper towel, baggie. Saves you a lot of work. This saves a lot of time. Does it want to come out of the bag? Now these ones are, are slightly grunged, but compared to these ones, but that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these, these ones aside and let them dry just a bit because they've already been glued together. And we're going to work on these ones. You have to work on a flat surface when you're doing that. But what we're doing is on this pointed end. See how it's pointed on one end and it's rounded on the other? The pointed end. We're going to put glue right on this point. And we're going to match it up with the point on the other one. But you got to do it laying down. Just like that. Let me pull you closer. See a brown surface might be better. Yeah, this is better. So you've got point to point. See that? So then you're taking the point of the next one and you're going to butt it up to where those other two points come together. So what this is going to look like from this point is a um, cross. That's what it looks like. So these other ones, you're going to put the glue on the point and you're going to stick it to its touching there on the point. And you're going to do that on all four sides. This one I didn't glue. You can glitter these, you can paint them all different colors.
So you have eight clothespins at this point pushed together. And they're sticking to my mat. There we go. And I'm going back at the four we just put on here and putting a tiny dab of glue right at the juncture there. But they're not set up yet. And squeeze these together so that glue catches. Now, when you put the two together, um, you need you can use a flat ornament like a snowflake, a star, um, you know, whatever you're using. I have these wooden stars from Dollar Tree. You can use a rusty star, and you need something to hang this with. Okay. Here's what we got. One part of the snowflake. So I have another one already done. This one I've glittered. See that? Can you see the glitter? So what you're doing when you put this one onto that one is you're just going to stagger the clothespins on, on the top one and the bottom one. So you get a look like that. And then you want to glue it down. Now at this point you can use more glue than just the little bit that we've been using. This one's stuck down already. So I'm going to put a dollop of glue right here in the center and just a little bit on the points. Lexa's talking to me for some reason. And we'll press this down and this will come off. I did this one in a hurry. So, we're just going to hold this together for a second. This gives you a double snowflake. Now you can use a single snowflake and just, um, Instead of doubling this up like this and just have single ones using eight uh, clothespins instead of 16. So there you go. This glue isn't totally set up yet, it's moving. Okay, so we can take grunge because this has the Mod Podge in it. And we can go over these bottom snow, uh, um, the petals, and then we can glitter it. This is glitter I got from Walmart. It's called Snowy Surprise, and it's quite shiny. You can also use um, a real fine glitter. That's a chunky glitter. But I have this star, and I just did a little tiny bit of red paint on it. So we're going to glitter it. I like this glitter because it has different size chunks in it. See how shiny it is? And I'm going to glue it right here to the center. So let's sit that one aside and let all that glue. So we're going to do one more. These are the ones that we grunged. Two, four, six, seven, eight. We did one too many. Just glue the points. Now this one, instead of laying the clothespin flat, I'm going to do it up on its side. 
That way you get a different look. And we're doing the same thing. You're making a cross here at the beginning. Now the first one of these I made, I had some of my clothespins on the side and then a couple of them I laid flat and it, it just was a deformed looking. It started out to be a deformed looking snowflake. So I just want to show you the two different looks by the way you turn your snowflake. Now you can uh, use the Dollar Tree snowflakes that you buy in a pack and if they don't have the little ones you can cut one down and put it in the center. You can use the, uh, any of the miniature tree ornaments for in your center. Oops, wait a minute, I need to turn those. Yep, see I just did it again on, on a couple of these. I put it on wrong. That's one nice thing, when your paint is still a little damp, you can correct your mistakes because it takes longer for the glue to set up. Now just like the other ones, I'm just putting a dab more glue right where these four we just put on intersect. And the reason I do that is because there's a tiny little gap when you add these center ones to the cross, that the first part we made, and it just helps that set up a little bit more. So I'm going to take this Mod Podge and I'm just going to go right over the tops. And I'm just using a foam brush doesn't take very, very much. And I'm also going to do a star. Now these stars, the edges of them come stained. And the front and back is just a plain color. So I'm just going to leave it like that and I'm going to put some Mod Podge on it because we're going to glitter this thing up. Let me knock some of this glitter off. I'm using a silicone pad, that way you can pull your stuff right off your glue. You knock some of that off. And I'm going to glue this right to the center. So we've made a double and we've made a single here. Let that glue. Now I just have a gold cording that I folded in half and put a double knot at the bottom. And what that's going to do, is the knot helps when you glue your hanger on, it helps the glue to um, stick better to your hanger. So I don't have a, um, a top and a bottom to this one, so I'm just going to put some glue and I'm going to stick that cording in it and I'm pushing it in with the tip of the glue gun. And I'm going to let that set up. 
So you can use a uh, jute, you can use string, uh, ribbon as your hanger. Now here's a single one. And lots of glue strings. <laughs> you always got glue strings. So I'm going to fold this, up, turn it over and then add just a little bit more glue. To that and um, I think this one I'm going to use a jute hanger because my other gold string, my cording, oh there it is. Okay, I just have a piece of gold, it's about eight inches long and I'm just going to put a double knot. So since we have some time left here, I have something else to show you. I'm just going to cut the, ta the tails off and glue this one on. So you've got two different snowflakes, two different ways. I'm going to hold that hanger so I can... There's the single. And here's the double. And I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to bring this other craft over and I'm going to show you a very unique tree. So what we're using is a pack of paper doilies. Okay? You need two of the first three sizes because when you get a pack of these, and you can get these at Dollar Tree. You get a really big one. Um, and a medium, and I like a coaster size. So what we're doing, set these over here, is I have some green food coloring in water. Take your doily and fold it in force, but don't make any creases, okay? You just want to be able to dip the lacy edge of this into the food coloring. Now, the longer you leave it in there, the darker your color is going to get, and the more that the color is going to go through. I just want the tips of these done. So there you go. It's just tinted right on the edges. And then you see how it's bleeding up through on the lace. So let's set this aside and let this dry because I've already done some to dry. Now I did a red one. Put the lid on that because I don't need green food coloring everywhere. I did a red one, but the red turned out pink. It didn't matter how much food coloring. I add it or um, how long I let it sit in the food coloring. So, let's set this aside. So these have already dried. So I have two of each side. See how this one, now it really bled. But I just did the tips of these. And I have two of the first three sizes. What else you need is two skewers and these I um, tinted with old English scratch cover. Do you see that? And I'm going to glue them together. I'm putting the top one halfway on the on the bottom one and I'm going to glue them together. Just so we have a bigger tree. We're going to just stick these together, just like this. I don't want my finger burnt. <laughs> so that, as that's setting up, we're also using a little block of wood. You can use um, the little buckets, the metal buckets you get. Um, but this is actually cut off from uh, the nativity, one of the um, 
furniture legs that we were using for the nativity? Well, this is the bottom part of it. It has a hole in it. If yours doesn't have a hole, you need to drill a hole. If you use a bucket, you can use a piece of um, foam in it, the floral foam. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick some glue down in there. You need the point of your dowel up and stick that in there. And then even though the hole is bigger than the dowel rod, the, the hot glue kind of holds it. So you just have to hold it so that it is straight. Otherwise we have a leaning tree. Okay. So we're starting with the biggest doily and you need to find the center. So I just fold them in half gently and fold them in half and kind of pinch the center. Okay. So hold it up how far, how much stem of your tree you want to see. That's where you need to put, hold it up there and put just a tiny dot of hot glue right where the top of that first one is going to be. And I'm going to transfer the, the center onto this one also. So we're using both of these. Just fold it in half and pinch that center. So these, the scallops on these, you want to stagger them. See how I've staggered them? There's one. So this scallop is going to go in between these ones. Okay? Make sure they're, they're even all the way around. And we're going to take this point of the dowel rod and we're going to push that right through the center marking that we made. And push this right down to where that glue that we did is. And we're gently just going to squeeze. Just squeeze it. Just gently. Okay? And then we're going to put a dot of hot glue on the top. That way this doily is not moving. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. The next size. Stagger them. Fold them in half and see how far you want this one to overlap that one, okay? That's where you're putting your glue. And I'm just holding it with my finger to mark it so I can put this one. You want them to overlap just a little bit. Let's slide this down. See, I'm just gently squeezing, just gently squeezing these. And then our last one. Got to find the center of these little ones. Now this one, you want some of the top of the dowel or your skewer to show. So see how this one's going to be like right there. Tony's cooking dinner because we have an early dinner because we have to get out of here. It smells really good. I haven't ate today and I'm hungry. So I'm just squeezing. Just squeezing. You just have to fiddle with these. Make sure that they're not stuck to each other. And then I made a cardboard star for the top. And I'm going to paint this. I'm going to show you a finished one. And you can stick it right down on there. So here's the one I tried to do red.
see it turned pink. And it did not matter how long I let these doilies in there or how much food coloring I used. So what else I did is I put a little bit of Spanish moss right here at the base. And there's the star. And I just painted it and glittered it. So it's a cute little tree. You can do these any color. Now these kind of trees you can leave out year round. There's that one. And here's the green one. Now when I did this one, the pink one, the doilies were still wet. These ones dried. So you see how they lay a little bit better. So if you do your doilies right as soon as you dip them in the food coloring, this one is a fluffier tree than this one. See the difference? But it just gives a lacy tree. Okay. Let me know what you think of these. Monday, I have something that I've been working on for quite a while that we're going to do. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it. So, come back. On Monday I will post the time and um, thank you for joining me Merry Christmas have a great day everybody <laughs>